Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today we got a good one. We're actually gonna be talking about two articles, okay? Okay. One of the articles came out was says, the average home buyer age increased to 56 years of age. In 2023, the average age was 49. So we're gonna be talking- That makes sense. We're gonna be talking about that. Okay. But we're also gonna be talking about the housing market is mirroring 2007 according to this new report. And you know, everybody knows what happened in 2007. Jesus. <laughs> so I'm taking that part as a grain of salt, but right. we're, we're going to read that part and we're going to talk yeah. about it because okay. this article is saying basically, you know, 2007, 2008, that's when the crash was. So I don't see that happening, but let's read the article. We didn't read it yet, so we're going to read it all together and we're going to talk about it. But let's talk about the first thing. But before we even do that, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Give it a thumbs up, share, and like. So, Bill, let's let me start it off. The average age we said in 2023 was four, was 49. First time home buyer average 38 years old. 38 years old okay. to be a first time home buyer. All right. Okay. So the medium house price was 435 thousand. All right. I don't want to age myself, but I think I bought my first house at 21. You know, okay. so now think about it. Now it's 38. Are you now are you noticing that less and less? I notice that a lot of young people are, are buying houses with brothers, sisters, other people. Yeah, I mean, you do. We're, we are seeing that. It doesn't surprise me, honestly, that the average. Now, again, this is average. So, yeah, it's all the ages added together and then divide it. So right. that the average age has gone up um, to 56. Right, you said 56. Yeah. From uh, 49. That's a big jump. <clears throat> yeah, it does make sense because I would say that the people that are purchasing homes right now are the ones that can afford to purchase homes right now because home prices are up, interest rates are up, so affordability is down because the you interest know, rates are up. You know, you said something interesting, interest rates are up. What happened to the thing that the feds are gonna cut a rate and prices are gonna go down? <laughs> That's a and misnomer. More, <laughs> everybody's like, I'm not buying a house because I I'm waiting for the mortgage rates, for the fed to cut rates and then they cut rates and what happens? The interest rates went up. They went up, I think they Five were weeks up. in a row. Yeah, five weeks in a we row. We are still on that upward streak. So this is why everybody poo-poos me when I say it's, and oh well, you're really just trying to sell houses. Is yeah, when, that's what they say in the comments, right? Well, okay, so he, I'm really trying to sell houses. He's, he's the positive one. I'm the negative one, I guess. Right. Well, what happened? The people in the last year that I've said, oh, we're going to wait till rates come down, and then the feds dropped the interest, uh, the federal lending rate. It came down. Uh, we actually have a meeting today, uh, and so they're saying they're going to drop it again. But the interest rates for the last five weeks have continued to rise. We're back up into the sevens again. What do you think? What do you think now that the election is over with and all that bull is behind us? <sighs> and you think things will get more stable now? Yeah, regardless of who got into office. Um, it doesn't matter. We have the election behind us and statistically, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but in the last, I believe it was the last eight elections, we have seen a uptick in sales by around five to 6% post election. Not like the day after, obviously. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time to build back up, you know, uh, you know, a few months. I mean, we're talking the only time I think this, if I recall correctly, the only time this, that was the opposite of that was back when Reagan was in office. Oh, wow. So we're, we're talking, we have a solid good number on what was happening and kind of circling back to the premise of this article, you know, waiting to buy is not necessarily the best idea because you don't know when those rates are going to come back down. So buying a home when it's the right time for you to buy a home is more important than going, I'm going to time the market because that never works out in general. Now, I'm sure somebody can tell me that there's a story of this, like everybody told me at the fire department that didn't wear their seatbelt. See, I survived, you know, because I didn't wear my seatbelt. Well, more people survive with seatbelts, right? But 56, that's the group that's had homes generally for a long period of time. So they sold those. And they have equity or they don't have a mortgage at all. And so interest rates didn't matter to them and they can afford to buy a, a, a larger home or more expensive So let's continue home. talking about the average age. The, the, let me read this. The age of the first time home buyers rose 38, mm -hmm. a three year increase from on the previous year. The percentage of first time home buyers decreased 8% to 24. 
So 24% of all homes sold were first time okay, home buyers. Yeah. That is the lowest mark since NAR began tracking the category in 1981. Uh, obviously, we said the medium home price increased to 435 according to the report. That's a 39% increase since 2020. So now, okay. first time home buyers has dropped, medium home price has gone up. It's like the perfect storm for first time home buyers. Right, so when we're looking at median, remember, I would expect the median home price to swing towards the upper side now simply because look at the average home buyer age is 56, right? right. So they're going to buy bigger homes, more expensive homes. So that's going to change your median because that's the majority of homes being sold. Right. Because I mean that that right there, those two things, that's what that says. All right. So so I just still think it's very difficult for first time home buyers to buy. Well, that's why the age has gone to 38. Yeah. 21 is tough. It's you're just starting out in a career, whether you went to college, what have you. So you, it's your first tier. It's your step one in the rung of life, making money. So with the prices going up, of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And to be quite frank, I mean, we sometimes we can't have everything when we're in our early 20s despite what we want. Yeah, so let's talk about this, the next article. Today's housing market is mirroring what happened in 2007, according to a new report released today. The National Association of Realists found, found the share of new home purchased in 2024 increased slightly to 15%, but existing home purchases declined to 85%. That's a pretty big drop. That reflects the same housing market that existed in 2007 when new home purchases also made up roughly 15% of the, of the market share and existing homes were, were 85%. So basically what they're trying to say here in this article, mm -hmm. according to NAR, from what I, I'm understanding, tell me if I'm correct, that the number of homes sold were matching up with 2007 right before the crash or during the crash. The percentage of homes. Percentage of homes. Not the number, because the number of homes that are sold right now is depending on how we're tracking we're talking nationally we're pretty abysmal uh numbers like back to 1995 ish so it's if i recall correctly on that stat but what i'm seeing here with these two numbers it makes a lot of sense depending on when this poll or when this data got pulled together it's recent so i'm, I'm assuming it's pretty fresh but new construction right now so we're having our cake and I eat it too so we wanted, we need more homes because we didn't have enough inventory. Yeah, I, want, I have my two cents about that too. We need more new, more homes because we're short homes, but what the hell is, if you're building homes that nobody could afford, don't count those homes. Well, but they're obviously able to afford it because the, obvi the percentage has gone up, not down. No, it's the same percentage as, as uh, 2007. Right, but it's a, still an increase in our new construction purchases. Yeah, but currently, it, I don't care about 2007. It's an uptick in 2024, right? So that means people are buying new construction homes more, and we're down 85% in resales because people are sitting on those houses longer. Yeah, the incentives, the same, uh, because there's more incentives with new construction. There's a lot more incentives with new constructions depending on where you're at. Like right now, I get these things every single morning where they're running a, Taylor Morrison's running a special, you know, ICI homes. Uh, I just toured an ICI home, uh, the Poppy model, absolutely gorgeous because they let you customize everything. This thing was huge. Um, and they knocked off 70 grand. So the person, something happened and the person couldn't purchase the home. So it's an inventory house now because they don't really do a lot of inventory. Um, but they knocked off a lot of money because of all the incentives that are out there. So, you know, it was a quick move in. So you're saying that it, it's in your opinion, I'll give you my opinion right afterwards, but you're saying your opinion that new construction is a better deal than existing homes right now, if you wanted to say. Yeah, in a lot of cases, because that's your major competition. If you, and if you have new construction in your area, if you don't, then you know, you're, you're, it's not the same thing. But so for instance, like Wesley Chapel, some of St. Pete, Tampa, Hillsborough County, you know, the, all those surrounding area here, there's a lot of new construction going on. So when you're looking at a house that's $450,000, that's 10 years old, and a house that's 455,000 or 465,000 that's brand new, and they're contributing 25, 30 grand to closing costs, or they're knocking your interest rate down from seven to five and a half for the first year, that's a big savings. 
Let's see what this person says. Alex, being a financial literacy instructor for the University of Tennessee at Martin said, this shouldn't sound alarming yet, though those concerns means another great recession is on the horizon. Okay, well, we're already in a housing recession. We've known that. I don't care what anybody says. That's just the way it is. But the, 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 the new last builders. Two years. Oh, here's my two cents. You know, existing home, you know, or a brand new home. I'd rather buy an existing home than a brand new home. And I did a video on it, the pros and cons of buying, you know, brand new. I think there's a lot of cons. I'll mention a couple. One of them is the houses are on top of each other. Okay, and Bill disagrees with all of the stuff I said. I pretty much disagree with everyone he says. Yeah, and, but I, I do the inspections. He does the sales. They're like, I can't stay in a house that's like eight feet away from the other house. Okay. The other thing, too, I don't like is they build these subdivisions so huge, it takes you 10, 15 minutes just to get out of them. It annoys the hell out of me. I don't like gated communities. And the, the other big thing is, too, it's, it's a non proven community so that I don't know what it's going to look like 10 15 years from now so I'd rather go into a community that's 10 15 years old and the trees are already grown the grass is already grew and I know the, the neighborhood and I know the ins and outs of the neighborhood not something that's brand new and you don't know what it's going to be like 10 years from now go ahead counter that because you sell them I sell them and I live in them so, like, I have a, I'm living in a neighborhood that's well, that's not why brandy, I said, brandy new. It's, but but it's, that's why I said I yeah. wouldn't live in Wesley Chapel because it's just too close to each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, my house, I don't really have any neighbors. They're pretty far apart. And you're just, it's not every single neighborhood that is, has a zero lot lines. They're called zero lot lines when the houses are that 10 feet apart. Um, you know, Longleaf, close to your house, is like that. Um, yeah, I don't like them. You know, but, <laughs> I mean, you live in Trinity, so, and your houses are like the houses that are in my neighborhood. Yeah, and I, I got privacy, but but I'm just saying is they they're giving it new new builders are having some issues right now selling. I deal with them every day. They're, they're some having, of them, yes. Yeah, they're having issues selling it. And I think some of that is just water cooler talk. Everybody got used to selling so quickly; they forgot what it's like. The new builds, it, it took longer for the new builds to feel the effect. I feel it. it it's a, it's a, it's like water cooler talk. Yes, things have slowed back down to what they were before. I think they're feeling more pressure because they've got a lot of money on the line. It's it's not like it's a resale house where you just don't sell your house that year. You know, you you, you postpone your move, you know, or your upgrade if you want for a year to let things stable out. You know, they've got a lot of money on the line when it comes to these homes. But if you are moving into an area that is growing, then the new construction, there's, it's hard to find homes that aren't being built. You know, you kind of, it's because there's no houses there, you know, in general. But to your point, it is, you know, you're, you don't have the mature landscape. And I agree with that. Right. You know, there's just look at Longleaf as an example, because I built, I built in there years ago when they were first established. And that's the neighborhood around here. Yeah. It, but they the the neighborhood itself it was tiny little trees you know they buy the little tree that you can pick up with one hand and they put it in the thing now you know we're fast forward 20 years the trees are mature and they grow and the neighborhood looks beautiful but you don't know what it's going to look like so you kind of have to have some future vision but you're also i didn't pay nearly what the house values are well today but this article goes on it goes the the biggest problem it is it's not that people don't want these houses it's it's basically they can't afford these houses like I said, there's a lot of buyers out there. And, you know, we were talking just before we went on camera, we were talking about one particular mm -hmm. person. And we figured out between their mortgage and their taxes and insurance, because they want to be near the water, it was going to be like six, $7,000 a month. Yeah, with taxes, insurance, mortgage, principal, and interest, everything. It's freaking nuts. Six that, But that's, it's nuts to you. It is nuts to me. Is it's it nuts, nuts to you? you. But there's people, obviously, you know millions of people every single day. I mean, there's, what, six million people in the county that are on the coast here in the Tampa Bay area. All right, so the medium home price sale in the United States today is 428281 according to Redfin. Wow, that's a 3.9% decline year over year. It's still not affordable for most Americans. Right. So building these expensive houses is really not helping the situation. But we're not building in our area. We're not building the higher end homes. They've 
they've stopped buying. They've stopped selling those. They've all right, switched. All right, you said something interesting in our area, so. I can't speak to the other areas. I don't know. Okay, but Tampa Bay, I go into all these build centers and do the things. I don't think I've seen one. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have something really, really cool. I haven't seen one build center that I could see a house under 450 to 500. Oh, we'll just come out to West Chapel for tomorrow or Friday. When you come up, I'll take you. What, you're, you're talking about houses in the threes? Yes. Full blown, not townhouses, not condos. Houses. Houses in the threes. Yep. Upper threes. All right, let's check that out. I want I want to see what you get for 300 th 350 for You can't put your rosy glasses on though what with I want rosy? this and I want this and all these no, fancy upgrades. No, I want I want a, it's, I it's want a, a house. house. Like it is a house. Like a three bedroom two bath house? Yeah, it's a house. With a garage? Yeah. And its own land yeah. for under 400? Yes. You heard it here from Bill. Come out. You can, but what, like I've always said, when you go to those build centers, you're going to go somewhere that's not in the heart of a town. There's there's pros and cons to it. You might have to drive a little further for your Publix. You, you don't have Which all is of the supermarket. I think. <laughs> no, people don't know. They it's, okay. So, but don't don't say okay. People don't know. At the end of the day, I'll. You, 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 you can't, the majority of people, you have to decide for yourself what you want. You would never, ever, ever, ever move more than five minutes away from a Publix. I know you. No, I won't. It won't. And if you have a gate because you hate gates, you'll never move into the neighborhood. No. If they gave you the house. No. It doesn't matter. I don't want to wait for the gate to open. You don't want to wait for the gate to open. And if it takes you more than three minutes to get out of your neighborhood, even if you have to drive on the road longer, it I doesn't matter. I get annoyed. So that's not the, I would, is if you were my client and I was finding you a house, there are probably, you just cut out 75% of the neighborhoods. Cause I know that's not where you want to look. That's not where you want to be. So it's not just, I'm going to go, I want this. And this is my cookie cutter. You have your own choice. Just like there's houses that I like that you don't like and vice versa. And there's things that depending on the house, I might like, or other people may like because I, I'm willing to make that concession because of my situation. That's your situation. So for me, I would not personally, in my life right now, I don't wanna drive an extra 20 minutes to find that house that's under 400K for a brand new house. I just don't wanna do it. Honestly, I didn't even know that they exist. I didn't know there was any houses for sale in the threes. I just yeah. did not know that there was houses yeah. in the threes. You know. Um, you know, sometimes I saw some advertisements of like 389, 359, but when I get there, they're, they're, they're never there. By the time they well, add, They can't really do that. Well, I'm telling you. It, it may like, not be built, but they, it's, it's, they're supposed to be there, but I'm telling you, they're there. It, it. You know, Bill, Bill, has, Bill has this channel and he does tours on his channel. And right now we're gonna put him on the spot and say, you gotta do a tour of one of the houses in the threes and put it on your channel. Okay. Say this is what you get for three and change. Yep, you have to drive. You're not anywhere near anything, but they're there, and it's still in Pasco County, technically. That's and if you go out of Pasco County, it's even it's a totally different ball game. But okay, so now we establish that the age mm -hmm. for the average buyer is a lot higher in the fifties, because right. that's who can afford the homes. Right, and the first time home buyers is way down and older. Right, again, back to they need a little life to make more money. You know, entry level job, no matter what it is, you're not gonna make the same as you do after 10 years of experience. So let me ask you this, what do you think is gonna happen and what's your predictions for the next six months is gonna happen to the housing market? Um, the rest of this year and the first six months, and I'll give you my opinion. So coming into the spring? The rest of this year, go finish. Well, for the up. rest of this year, just it, it's gone. It's we have nothing's really going to be moving. There's it, it, there's houses selling, but it's not like we're we're already in our we're in our area. We're in our slow market right. now as it is. So now, okay, there's a new president coming in. The first six months of twenty five. So in spring, I think you'll see another uptick again, just because I think there's more stability. People put a lot of a clout onto the president, regardless of who got into office. It's just a lot of uncertainty, adding already to the insurance uncertainty and all the other issues that we have. So at least people can feel a little bit more comfortable because the candidate gets in and 
uh, you know, I'm sure they've announced it. It's finalized now. I don't know. But, you know, whichever candidate gets in and in, in um, to office, it just kind of settles things a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I think there's something to that. I mean, there's statistics to prove it. So, but I think we might see a little bit of an uptick. At the end of the day, houses are still going to get sold, right? It, it, houses will still get sold. Investors are still going to purchase houses. Builders are still going to build houses. And they're going to do what they need to do to move the property so that they can get that land in those homes off their books. And we're still short in housing in this country in general, and we're not going to build out of it in the next year. All right, let me let me counter all that. I think the rest of this year is useless because the holidays, everything. I, yeah. I think the first six months of next year, I think things are going to still be slow. And I think they were popping things up so much because of these elections to make things look good that now they're going to let the air out. So, and I think that we're going to have a rough six months, but I think after that, I think things will start stabilizing. So you're talking housing market or housing, just, or, house, housing market, or economy, economy, both, both. I, I think they're both going to be hurting for the mm-hmm. first six months. It doesn't matter what people do. What's hurting? No, Jobs. I, mean, I mean, define in the housing market. Like, what do you mean? Can you uh, uh, quantify? Hurting? Nobody's nobody's going to be selling. They're going to be afraid to sell. Nobody's going to be buying because they're looking for jobs. I just think that because yeah, those jobs reports, yeah, oh are horrible. They, they were horrible. And then they did that little sneaky sneak maneuver. Yeah, they do it Saturday night when everybody's out having a good time. Where we you, fix it. Yeah, they fix it, and it went down to nothing. You know, that's oh, what that's the yeah. that's the kind of tricks what I'm t- saying about. As like now that the election is over with, I think that the true numbers, the true mm-hmm. situation is going to come out and it's not going to be pretty. And the person that's going in there right now, yeah, wants to fix it. But, it, you know, it's not going to be like an overnight fix. You know, it's going right. to take a while. And oh, of course. Yeah. It's it's not like they get inaugurated and everything goes in and then the it, next it, morning it, it, everything's fine. Yeah. It, it doesn't work like that. No. So and then, you know, and, it, you know, we're short on homes. We're short on affordable homes. Yes. Okay. That's what we're short on. If they're still building houses that you need three to five grand a month to pay your taxes, P and I, and insurance, mm-hmm. that's not affordable to me for first time home buyers. I know my kids couldn't even afford it, you know? And, and you know, and they have jobs. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just not affordable. I think what we need is affordable housing and i'm talking about affordable housing in the twos 250 th- under 300,000 depending on where you're at the, i'm yeah, sure that's feasible i know uh, i talk to a realtor that's in illinois all the time and then where he's at that's every day but it goes with their their median income over there too yeah there. but over here in florida what people have to realize is this is a big state but everybody's coming to the seacoast still you know, East Coast or West Coast, yep. so it's driving up prices. If you want an affordable house in Florida, you're not living on the coast. Head head inland a yeah, little bit. You have to. There are some affordable houses there. Yeah, you can. If we're talking coastal houses, but that's it, where everybody's it, moving. Well, I'm Miami, sorry. Fort Lauderdale, all this stuff. Hey, I'm sorry, first time home buyer that they just got my job out of college. I can't live on the beach. What a shame. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. that's that I get. Like, you know what? It's, it's a funny story. <laughs> like, l- last year, these buyers came in from New York and, uh-huh. and I was doing an inspection. They're like, yeah, we picked this house, but it was so weird. Every, this is right after the hurricane, like uh-huh. five months later, he goes, every house that we look at, it's all remodeled. People really want to sell their houses. <laughs> and I'm like, I said, do I have the heart to tell them that every one of these houses got flooded and that's well, why they're remodeled? The state took care of that for you because we have a new disclosure form that must be filled out. Yeah, but that, I'm talking about right. last year. Right, story. but I mean, that was why, because people are like, mm-hmm. you know, so they've kind of revamped those. So feel comfortable that, the, you know, at least the state's government has gone, hey, mm-hmm. we need to make sure that the nobody can really pull the wool over eyes. On yeah, people. because there was like, right. I was like, there's a reason why these are all Exactly. That stuff. would be a clue to me. I would be like, wait a second. This entire neighborhood is remodeled. That's weird. I'd want to know why. You know, I might want to pull some insurance records and things like that and permits and see what happened. But, do, yeah, uh, do, yeah, do do your homework and stuff. But definitely. anyways, that's my my that's my two cents. I really think that you know we need affordable homes to get out of this. Yeah. Not not building homes. Building four or five hundred thousand dollar homes is not affordable. 
for first right, time. But that's not. And then again, you know, you might not get concessions. You might not be able to get the exact home that you want. If you want to live in a close area, maybe you do have to do a townhouse or a villa. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, we're doing a, a house. We're gonna do a video soon of the biggest. Re I wrote down biggest regrets of people that told me when they bought homes. We're oh, gonna cool. be we're gonna be doing that. That'd too. be a good video. I like. Anyways, that. that's today's video. If you do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And check out this video right here. I picked it just for you guys, and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.